Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wow, this is spooky. Um, I guess I got to start up. I grew up in the streets of the Bronx. Started drinking alcohol at a young age, uh, real young. Started smoking cigarettes in the fifth grade. Then I graduated at 16 to LSD and pot. Uh, in the streets of the Bronx, I guess you start, you know, at 16, you start carrying knives. At 17, the guns came in, you know. In uh, 1976, I was 20 years old, hanging out with the wrong crews. Uh, I was really, I was stabbed in a fight, and it was really bad. It went through my lung, into my heart. I seen myself. Uh, it was all the people you were hanging out with, and, and I made those choices. Fights every weekend, arrested, barred from New Rochelle, nightclubs. That was the disco era. You know, now if I move a hip, I'll break it. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, yeah, it was, I thought it was fun. I thought I was doing the right thing. Got married in 1980. Uh, ended up in a rehab in 89. Because I was always a user. I didn't realize I was an abuser. You know, with the heroin and, you know, my drug of choice was speedballing. Heroin and speed and coke and whatever you had, I guess. With the bottle of Johnny Walker between my legs. So I ended up in a divorce in uh, 2000. Got married again in 2001. Got divorced in 2008. I thought my life was okay. Um, then... It was 1994 when I left the Bronx and moved to Manahawken, New Jersey. It took me a month to learn how to spell Manahawken. <laughs> but anyway, that's when I met the Nash brothers. Yeah, late Native American landscaping. Talk about God putting someone in your life. But uh, it was so funny because um, Bobby was, you know, preaching all this stuff, and here I am. You know, he, I, you said the sinner's prayer on my driveway in 94. And yeah, yeah, I went. Yeah, yeah. I still led my life without God. I still did it. Uh, and he still continued, you know, to, to preach to me and disciple me. In fact, when, the, when my sons were around, I used to say, do me a favor. If they start talking that God stuff, go get my gun. You know, <laughs> we had fun. We had fun. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying to remember it without reading it. But uh, yeah, that's when I came. You know, Michael Nash, just every time I seen him in Wawa, wherever, we love you, go see my brother at church. So um, I just kept shrugging it off. I just kept shrugging it off. But I never forgot. Which brings me to June of 2010. Um, after two divorces, losing two houses, I moved in with my father. I had nothing left. But anyway, I met this girl, Rose, walking the dog. And again, not having God in my life, my language was very offensive. But she never corrected me until she told me um, one day, she says, my son just graduated Bible college and he's become, becoming a pastor and my son-in-law is a priest. So I says, I guess when I meet them, I can't curse. So she goes, yeah, you know, it is very offensive. It woke me up. It just woke me up. Something clicked. And I, I just realized, like, wow, this is offensive. I always knew you shouldn't, you know, curse in front of children and women, but I just, you know, I blamed it on the Bronx. But um, she started to charge me a quarter for every time I cursed <laughs> to give in to the church, but... I said, what are you looking for in a man? She says, well, someone to go to church with. <laughs> That's when I got scared. And I says, well, I guess I could do that once or twice. So anyway, I remembered Michael telling me about the church. She's asking me where a church is. Um, I came here that Sunday. I never left. I never left. And that, that's Michael. That was Michael and Bobby. And Rose. And Rose. But I didn't do it for them. That, this is just as definitely for me and him. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. I, you know, now I'm an usher. I go to boot camp. I go to devotions. I remember listening to the songs. How do they remember all these songs? And I, oh God. But now it's not the music and the songs. It's the words in them. 
Man, they pumped me. And I just told Rose this morning that, you know, Oh, How He Loves You, that song always makes me cry. Sorry. <laughs> and they played it three times today. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, that, and thank you very much, too, for helping me with this. You know, he says to me when we're reading all this, he says, Vinny, I thought you were just that big Italian funny guy. You know, yeah, I had a past. Thank God you didn't know me then. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to walk with him. Definitely going to walk with him. He's my man now. Thank you very much. Yes. Vinny, do you believe in Jesus Christ and his life, death, and resurrection? Yes. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Do you understand that in baptism, you're identifying yourself with Christ's life, death, and resurrection, and you're now becoming part of his bride, the church? Yes. Do you commit to follow him all the days of your life, not only to be your Savior, but your Lord? Yes. Vinny, then in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of this church, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much and praise you for Vinny, Lord God. And what a long road it's been, but he's here. And Father, uh, we just praise you for this outward declaration that you are his Savior, Lord God. And Father, we pray that uh, you, he would reflect you in the life he lives, Lord, that his sons would see the difference and they would want more. Father, that the people in his life would see the difference and that they would want more, more of you. We commit Vinny to you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.